Welcome everyone to the Woman Reinvention Project. My name is Vesna Hursto and today we are speaking with Jenny Mannion. Jenny is a mind-body mentor, an energy healer and soul realignment therapist. She went through her own self-healing journey many years ago and now works with people to guide them through their own self-healing path. She's also the author of the book, A Short Path to Change, 30 Ways to Transform Your Life. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much, Vesna. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. So before we kind of get into, we're going to do some, you know, talk about self-love and do some exercises on energy, which is pretty exciting. But before we get into that, one of the first questions that I ask is, what makes your life work? So what helps you to keep balanced and maintain a sense of self? Definitely some some self-love, you know, yeah. knowing my limits, uh, mm-hmm. trying to set a schedule of things, but that also includes booking in time for myself. That includes, I book like two lunches a week with friends so that I can connect with my mm-hmm. friends. I... I treasure the time in the morning when I'm laying in bed because that's my time to set intentions and pay mm-hmm. gratitude and go within and just really connect with myself. So booking the time helps and even just really thinking about what I want to balance. If mm-hmm. I want to balance my work and time with my sweetheart and my relationship and time with my kids, really thinking about what that looks like and just giving myself a break sometimes. If the laundry doesn't get done today, it's okay. You know, yeah. not beating myself up. I mean, when I did that, that was part of what made me sick, just always being that perfectionist. I say I'm a recovering perfectionist now. Mm-hmm. So just listening to my body. Mm-hmm. You know, if if I've done enough, I've done enough. You know, yeah. and being able to listen to that and being able to just go with it and say, what do I need? You know, mm-hmm. what do I need? Do I need time with my friends? Uh, have I spent enough time with my children and checked in with them and really just kind of tuning into myself too mm-hmm. and taking inventory so that I know how I'm feeling yeah. and I know if I'm imbalanced or not. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So how did you start your, start, start into your work of, of helping people on their health self healing journey or helping them to heal and of, you know, chronic illnesses or terminal illnesses? How did you begin that journey? It began with healing myself. I was sick for almost seven years with a bunch of chronic diseases. Uh, First it was chronic mono. They always found the Epstein-Barr virus in my blood. Then it was fibromyalgia, which is chronic diffuse pain throughout your body. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had the flu most days. Then it was a genetic blood disorder, factor V Leiden, which they said I was much more likely to get a blood clot. I manifested a blood clot within a month of them telling me that and was in the Mm. hospital for four days. And the last one was the most dire. It was Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, benign hypermobility. And that they led them to say that I would be in a wheelchair possibly as soon as a year, that the pain would settle in my legs and I would live a life on pain pills and with physical therapy and really never recover. So uh, I did all the traditional things that you do. You get a lot of information, which maybe doesn't help so much because yeah, I started yeah, yeah. manifest even more symptoms as mm-hmm. I read about them. I joined support groups, which didn't feel so supportive all the time because a lot of times it was people comparing how bad their life yeah. was. And I read books, books and books and books on my illnesses and being sick and what it meant to be chronically ill. And none of those really empowered me. It just made me really identify and become every single disease that I was diagnosed with. Mm. So at some point I did see the movie, The Secret. I think a couple things led to me being able to even watch that because it has been recommended for me for a year before I watched it. And there were a couple things in that movie that really clicked with me. One that are, is our bodies always recreating cells. We're 99.99% new every 11 months. Some, some body parts, you know, regenerate almost in a couple of days or weeks. Mm. So where we put our attention, it made sense to me that If I'm saying I'm sick all the time and doctors are confirming that, what kind of cells am I creating? Mm. And the other thing was gratitude. I was not grateful. I was very upset that I was sick. I was in my 30s. I had two young children to take care of. I was concentrating very much on my pain, my Mm. illness, my limitations. I had a lot of negative self-talk telling me I wasn't a good enough mom. I wasn't a good enough wife. I wasn't good enough Mm. at anything really. And that's not really a motivating healing environment for your body. (laughs) So after seeing the movie, I said, you know what, I don't have anything dire where I need to go to the doctor. I'm not going to go to the doctor for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to just 
concentrate on these things and see if mm-hmm. I feel better. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know I could totally heal myself because that was out of the question, mm-hmm. ac- according to the doctor. So I said, I have not tried this path before. I'm going to see what happens. If every day I just delve into the mind, body, spirit, Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, Wayne Dyer, just eat this stuff up and start listening to myself talk and changing the way I'm speaking to myself. And also the gratitude was huge. I feel that was the hugest, hugest thing to sit in the morning and right before bed when our mind is in that half awake, half asleep state. And those Mm -hmm. messages are usually, unfortunately, negative messages we're sending. We're worried about the day. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, projecting our fears of what's going to happen that day or, Oh, I don't believe I have to do this. And I'm so busy and I'm going to be running and doing this and that. And then at night, sometimes we're sitting the regret. Oh, I wish I didn't say that. Or so, to change that up and to be in that positive sp- space of gratitude, I'm grateful I have a soft bed to lay in. I'm grateful that I can read to my kids, even if I can't mm-hmm. run after them right now. Uh, in three weeks, I was healed of all physical pain. Mm. Wow. And that made me to just be like, I want to shout this from the rooftops. Yeah. Heal, you know? and, and what did the doctors say? I, it's funny because I did not go back to the doctors for a while. And when I did see my doctor, because I live in a pretty small town, he just looked at me like he was in shock. Yeah, He's wow. like, aren't you sick? I'm like, nope, I'm not sick anymore. And uh, it took me about a year to go to the hematologist because I was on a blood thinner. And I really just didn't want to go back to doctors after that for a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd had enough of my fill for seven years, a couple yeah. times a week. Uh, And the hematologist even said with, I told him about my life, you know, for the last year that I had healed. And he said, with your mindset, where you are now, it would be more dangerous for you to be on it than off of it. And he gave me his blessing to go off of it. Mm -hmm. So I've been medication free for eight, nine years, not on any medications, vitamins or anything, barely ever get sick. When I do, I look to my chakra system. I look to Mm -hmm. my inner guidance to tell me what's off. And to bring myself back into balance as as quickly as possible, I I do acupuncture. If I if mm-hmm. I feel like I need assistance, I will go to my good I have two good friends that are acupuncturists. Awesome! What an amazing story. Um, so we'll get into the energy and chakra balancing. So, but who do you work with now? So, what do you who do you work with? What do you help them with? How do people come and see you? I work with people of all ages, from children to. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the oldest client I've had has been in their 80s, and I do work with a lot of chronically ill people. Uh, I do also host a women's group with a, co-facilitate a women's group with a good friend of mine. So I work with people that want to heal, that want to change their mindset. I work with a lot of chronically ill. I've, I've worked with a lot of late-stage cancer clients, uh, clients that have MS, and I have seen people heal from Mm. stage three and stage four cancer, from MS, from things Mm -hmm. that they do not say that you can heal from. Mm -hmm. So I work with people on a couple of different levels. I work with them as a mind-body mentor. A lot of the exercises in my book are just about changing your mindset, getting a huge toolbox. We need a lot of tools, and we need really short, simple tools because our mind Mm -hmm. will just meet all kinds of things of resistance and things are complicated. And I work with people on energy at that energy level, uh, I've studied energy healing, a few different modalities. So most of my clients are distance. About 80% of my clients are distance. So I will do distance energy healing. And then I also do Akashic Record Reading or Soul Realignment program. I studied with Andrea Hess, and that is really wonderful too. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's asking about that person at soul level mm-hmm. and helping them discover their soul gifts and bringing that into alignment too. Sometimes we do have blocks and restrictions from mm-hmm. karma and contracts and things that I do always believe in free will that we can heal things on our own, but sometimes we need a little help, you know, yeah. and the Akashic record clearing really is like a not so gentle push along your spiritual wow. path. And sometimes the energy healing can just kind of snap things back in place, realign you. I never look at it like I'm healing someone else. I look at it like Mm. we're all self-healing. We get a cut, we heal. It's that simple. But (laughs) we can have energy blockages. Mm. We can have our limiting thoughts to get through. Not only ours, but the ones that we've carried through from our family and our community and everyone around us. So sometimes I just, I try to help people find their own power and know that they're Mm -hmm. unlimited and that they can heal themselves. And sometimes we go through some not so pretty things. You got to bring up some stuff from the past and help, help yourself heal. But it's 
so much better than carrying that pain forever. Yeah. You know, if you if you do this work, it's not that much work. It's going to feel like it a little bit in the beginning because mm. you're going to bring up some tough things. But again, it's you're not going to be suffering with it for years. Mm. You might have this negative pattern for 30, 40 years, and it might take three weeks to get rid of it, you yeah. know, with a little two minutes a day, you mm. know, devoted to that. It really does not take that much. Change can be fast. Yeah. The, the problem is we meet a lot of resistance mm. and being really loving and kind to ourselves in the process, watching that negative self-talk and just knowing that it's going to come up. It's okay. We're mm. human. You know, we can kind of laugh at ourselves. I roll my eyes at myself a lot. Oh, this again, really? <laughs> you know, just to be able to bring that humor in and not take ourselves so seriously and really start focusing on the beautiful things in ourselves and in our lives instead of the bad things. We have no trouble concentrating on the negative mm. things on oh, someone said that to me, or I shouldn't have said that, and we'll go on about that for hours in our head, but we never concentrate on, well, I did some, oh, wow, I called that friend today that I knew was in need. That was really great of me. I'm glad I did that. We won't even, like, do that for two seconds, never yeah. mind a yeah. long period of time. So switching our mindset a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting. Our mind is really kind of wired to find what's not working and, and what we're not <laughs> happy with. It's incredible. But, yeah, that switch is amazing. And and um, I think what you said in the beginning, like gratitude is, is a great way to, to make that switch as well because you have your mind starting to search for things that you're grateful for instead of the things that, are, um, that you're not happy about. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's get into, um, you know, what are your suggestions or – or your, your steps or your tips, whatever it is. And I know we're going to go through an exercise and, and talk about energy and, and chakra balancing. But just for the women who are kind of, um, that are listening, that are, you know, always busy, tired, run down, feel like they have so much to do with, you know, not the space to do it in, you know, and they feel like their life is very unbalanced. So what kinds of things can they do to, to create more balance and to shift the energy? There are a few things. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, there are always windows of time. We are mm-hmm. we are people that say we're, we don't have any time, and that's really not helping helping the matter. Yeah, yeah. If we find these little pockets of time, again, it doesn't take that much time. Mm-hmm. These negative thoughts, subconscious thoughts, are constantly running. But if we take, I look at that as static on a radio almost. But if we mm-hmm. take that little bit of time. Two minutes in the morning, laying in bed before we get out of bed. In the shower, when we're usually so preoccupied and, you know, don't even know what we're thinking. We're so preoccupied. Yeah. On our commute to work, right before bed at night. Those are, like, a couple of, like, two minutes, five minutes opportunities where we can really do some good stuff for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We can pay gratitude for Mm -hmm. things in our life, people in our lives. We could pay gratitude for things that we've done that we're happy about little things. I'm yeah. happy I cooked my kids dinner tonight, you know, like little things that we never give ourselves props for, but we'll beat ourselves up for, you know, any yeah. little thing that we feel like we haven't done. I love the exercise Ho'oponopono mm-hmm. as another quick thing to do. That is, you know, Hawaiian prayer form of healing. It's mm-hmm. four sentences. And I look at it like our third dimensional self saying it to our soul. Mm-hmm. I love you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And those are really powerful things when we start saying them to Mm -hmm. ourselves because we're acknowledging, oh, I do love you. We we are perfect at soul level. We wouldn't be struggling this much if we didn't love ourselves and want ourselves to be comfortable. I love you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I get so caught up in this humanness and put this negative energy out, you know, please forgive me. Thank you. And to say that to ourselves or to say that to someone that's either annoying us a little bit or Mm -hmm. someone that, um, we've had a really hard time with in our lives and knowing that if that person has, if we perceive that they have hurt us, they've probably been hurt. Happy, Mm. well-adjusted people don't go around mean things to people. So really coming from that angle of okay I've suffered with this enough Mm. (laughs) you know that person was probably hurting too uh in that situation and getting beyond that 3d reality of that blame Mm -hmm. and just saying you know I love you you know I'm sorry Mm -hmm. you know and at that person at soul level you're talking to their soul if you feel like you can't see that person in front of you you know and say that saying it to their soul is really powerful Mm. um and you know I'm sorry for the energy I've put 
forward, you know, calling you names for the last 10 years or whatever. Love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So Ho'oponopono and gratitude are two really wonderful things. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, an anchor is another wonderful thing to think about. Um, we'll do an energy exercise in, in a few minutes too. That's really easy. An anchor is like a really beautiful moment in your life. So as I said before, we can concentrate so hard on the bad memories mm-hmm. and it almost feels like we're there when we do, but we don't ever allow ourselves to relish in that beautiful yeah. moment, some of the best moments in our lives. And when I've done this in women's groups, it's really interesting because most of the women will start crying because it's so beautiful, wow. you know, to be in that anchoring moment and to, you know, bring back the smells and sights and feelings and emotions of that moment. And we never let ourselves sit yeah. in how beautiful life can be. But we let ourselves sit in the sludge all the time. Yeah. So true. <laughs> so, so, so to true. have a moment in mind that just makes you smile, that makes yeah. you feel good, that lifts your energy. There are so many little tools, and that's what my book is all about, just the shortest tools possible yeah. that we can pull, fr- pull and use in a moment's notice if we're having that moment during the day where we're feeling stressed out. Uh, mm-hmm. And the next is the energy exercise. If you'd like, I could start yeah, leading. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'd like everyone to, well, we'll begin by, I always have people rub their hands together because it's a good way to awaken the energy body and to start feeling the energy. Mm-hmm. And then just settle yourself into wherever you're sitting. Then I'll ask that you hold your hands a little bit apart, close your eyes, and just begin feeling that energy between your hands. Feel that it's warm, invite a smile in, and just know that this energy is always flowing within you. You can move your hands in and out a little bit if you want to feel the energy moving in and out. No one is judging you if you want to rub your hands again together. To feel that energy clearer, that's totally fine. But the more we pay attention to our energy body, the more that we can be in touch with it. And I use it as a way to bring myself to the current moment, to play a little bit, be childlike, play with that energy, really just feel that energy coursing through your body. With your eyes closed, I'd like you to just see that energy moving up your hands, moving up to your arms, your shoulder your neck, your head, kind of sitting at the top of your head, clearing your mind, coming down, your face, relaxing your face and your neck, going down your body again, your chest, your stomach, your legs, your calves, your feet, Now just bring it back up, your legs, your stomach, and feel it in your heart for a second. And just let yourself sit here for a second with the gratitude you feel for someone or something in your life, or something that really brings you a lot of joy. Let that energy soak into your heart. Know that this energy is always available to you. If you have a part of your body that feels stress or pain, you can move this energy to that part of your body. Again, if you smile, it's just wonderful because you're just inviting in that healing energy. There's no judgment. There's no way to do this wrong. You can picture the energy in whatever manner feels right for you. I had a uh, shaman teacher that used to picture little smurfs working on him so it would make him smile and laugh so so many times we take ourselves so seriously this is about that joy and being childlike and just connecting to our energy body if you want you could put your hands on your heart and really feel that energy in your heart think about that loved one again think about how you feel when you're with them i'd like to think you to think about one thing that you're grateful about for yourself you, you know, you are a great friend, a great listener, love, love to cook, something that is uniquely you, that you just really enjoy and love about yourself. Take a 
Take a second and breathe that in. Be grateful for yourself for taking this time to connect with your energy body. Know that you can always do this. You can bring this into any part of your body that feels pain. It takes a few seconds. Thank yourself one more time. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Very nice. <laughs> Very relaxing. <laughs> Yeah, and it's how long did that take? Two minutes? Yeah, you know, something so. like that. <laughs> it's uh, it's really easy to do, even if you're laying in bed in the morning or at mm. night. At night, if you have trouble going to sleep, to be able to do that and picture the energy washing up and down your body, it's just a nice way to bring you into that relaxed state. Think some good thoughts, you know, instead yeah. of going to the negativity. Think some good thoughts. Think about so many things that are good about you. Allow mm. yourself to sit there for a little while, even a few seconds. Is yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I feel I feel quite light. Like I feel lighter from that. So it's always oh, a clean seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um okay, so how often like say for that exercise, women can do it whenever, right? So if yeah. you're if you're if you're stressed, if you're rushed, if you're kind of feeling anxious or in a pressure, mm -hmm. um, definitely sit down and, and try to because do you find that easier to do than say doing a meditation? For women oh, that yeah. have so much going on in their head. Oh, yeah. My mind will go crazy in a meditation, but if I, that's, that's one of the reasons I love energy medicine for a lot of reasons and energy, but that is one of the reasons I love it because it does help me quiet my mind. Mm. It does give me something to concentrate on that's very positive and beautiful and part of me, you know, that I don't really ever acknowledge. Yeah. And yet that energy can rush through our body and make us feel so good and alive and connected. And yeah, I mean, any, any time you can do that in the shower, you know, again, yeah. to, to really just bring that energy in and relax, feel that deep mm -hmm. relaxation. Water is so healing for us. And again, mm -hmm. the shower is such a beautiful time to do a meditation or something. We can imagine the water like washing all the negativity away from us. Yeah. We can bring in that energy and really feel it up and down our body. So yeah, there's no wrong or right time. Anytime yeah. you have two minutes, you know, yeah, or if you're it. stressed out, you know, yeah. I wouldn't really suggest it in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, uh, really, any time is appropriate. And just to kind of touch on to the chakras a little bit, like how much do chakras um, play in terms of how much is it? Like if we're stressed and we're anxious and we're our life is quite unbalanced, what starts happening with our chakras? Well, they get out of balance depending mm -hmm. on what is going on in our life and also some of the past patterns we have. The chakras become in and out of balance. There are seven major ones in our body starting mm -hmm. at our root and really depending on what's going on in our life. The first chakra is at the base of the spine and it's red. Colors of the rainbow, so they're really mm -hmm. convenient to memorize. And Eastern medicine is really based on the energy system. Mm -hmm. We don't include that here. But I feel like it's my own inner diagnostic system. And again, my book, I just make it really simple. Mm -hmm. The red is the root and it's really about how comfortable we are on this planet. Mm -hmm. It's the messages we've heard from our parents, our community. And if that's out of balance, we can really get problems with our legs and feet. We feel very uncomfortable walking on this planet. The first three mm -hmm. chakras are very much about our life here on this planet. Second chakra is the sacral one, which is uh, right below the bu belly button and it's orange and it is about everything creation, the way we create emotions, but also the way we create as man and woman. So our mm -hmm. sexual relationships, as well as how we see ourselves as men and women our mother and father relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that's out of balance, it can cause issues with our sexual organs mm -hmm. uh, and with 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 relationships, with creating money too, because it is mm -hmm. about creating. Third chakra for, is and, fertil yep. and for fertility mm -hmm. as well. Would that and affect fertility? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And the yellow, the third one is yellow solar plexus, and that's our power center. It's our gut. It's our feeling of control and power. So if it's over over active it can cause things like that real narcissistic okay. uh one upper attitude yeah. and if it's underactive it can cause a real victim mentality and mm. it can also if it's out of balance cause problems with digestion that just kind of makes sense it's like you find things hard to swallow and digest mm. because your power is out of 
out of whack, <laughs> out yeah. of balance. Mm -hmm. Your fourth chakra is at your heart, and it's green. Some people see that as gold, too. And that connects the upper chakras and the lower chakras, and it's really about love. It's beautiful. I mean, I mm -hmm. love the chakras because they make sense when you learn about them. It's mm -hmm. about love. It's about relationships. Most importantly, it's about self-love. Because when we do love ourselves and we know we're worthy, we create healthy boundaries, yeah. which is women. Sometimes that's a very hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. And we care about ourselves enough to know that we want healthy relationships. We deserve healthy relationships, yeah. and we create those around us. Fifth one is the – and if that is out of balance, I have seen people um, – breast cancer, mm -hmm. lung problems, chest issues – fifth chakra is the throat and that's our communication and it's blue mm -hmm. and it's again with women sometimes I find that out of balance because we've been taught maybe not to speak our truth we've been afraid mm -hmm. to speak our truth if that's overactive it's someone that talks a lot <laughs> yeah. Yeah. almost doesn't you know have a filter and just constantly chatters yeah. and if it's underactive we can feel very afraid to speak our truth and that can cause thyroid issues if that's mm -hmm. out of balance Third eye chakra uh, is indigo, and that's probably the most commonly known one, the sixth mm -hmm. chakra, and it's our intuition. It's how we see the world and how we see ourselves. Uh, that can create migraines, headaches, uh, sinus issues, if that's out of balance. Mm -hmm. And the crown chakra is violet at the top of our head, and that's our connection to everything. We see ourselves as so separate, but it's really our connection to everything, and I love that there are foods and affirmations and gems and yoga poses to balance each one. But I love that the f there's no food for the crown chakra. It's really, are you present when you're eating? Are you grateful mm. for the food? Usually mm. we're like shoving in food mm. in our mouths like, okay, I got to do this next. Yeah. But it's really about being present, being grateful. We have food, you know, yeah. every day to eat. So, yeah, those are the chakras. Quick, quick version, but it's, yeah, yeah. it is really important to know when they're in balance and out of balance. And like I said, I use that as my inner diagnostic system. If something is off, I'll get a sore throat if I'm not saying something. Yeah, and I will wow. notice it and bring my attention to it and say, okay, how can I communicate this in a loving mm -hmm. and kind manner? So it is, it's just really helpful to know. Because mm -hmm. our body will give us signals. Our body's trying to talk to us and yeah. tell us things before disease is really created. But we're just not taught how to listen to it and yeah. how to receive those messages. Yeah, totally agree. <clears throat> I find that when you kind of talk to people for long enough and you're going to, you get them in touch with their body and kind of just their inner life, you know, and then ask them, what do you feel is kind of at the heart of this? Like what's really causing this, whatever symptoms they have or whatever condition they have. And, and generally there's an intuitive knowing. Like some people will say to me, I think I maybe know what the cause is, but I don't think it's true. Like, I don't know. Like there's, cause they're doubting it, you know, but that generally people know, like if, and if they don't know, it's cause they haven't, you know, gone in and, right. and spent enough time within themselves to find out. But yeah. It's interesting that you you know you use the chakras as a diagnostic kind of um, tool you know to, to find out where you're at. So, what do you find is the biggest obstacle for women? And you may have already mentioned this, but what do you find keeps women kind of stuck where they are? I think it's guilt and the lack of self love and self worth. The yeah. combination. I think the guilt comes from the lack of self love yeah. and self worth because yeah. we're just we're so used to being those nerds the nurturer mm. and doing everything for everyone and being everything for everyone. Yeah. And we begin to feel very guilty if we take time for ourselves. Mm. And it took me actually you know, getting laid up for almost seven years to recognize that how important it was to do things for myself. And mm. that is why I book lunches with friends every week. And that is why I make sure that I get out for walks and do things that are good for me because we cannot, we cannot, we can't pour from an empty pitcher, you know, yeah. I mean, we need to fill ourselves and we need to live our passions and what we love to do. Mm. When I write every day, I feel wonderful. You know, that's yeah. something that gives me energy and joy. What gives you energy and joy, you know, to ask yourself that. And that's something that, okay, if you can't do it every day, maybe you could do it once a week. There's, there's some way you can fit it into your schedule and it's necessary yeah. because we take on all these roles and then we're judging ourselves on the roles. Am I a good yeah. enough mom? Am I yeah. a good enough daughter, attentive enough daughter, wife, whatever it is, friend? 
but who are you? You know, and that's what I had lost myself when I was sick. I didn't know who Jenny was anymore. Mm -hmm. I was all those roles, but I didn't have any idea who I was. And it Mm -hmm. wasn't until I started to ask myself and get in touch with those things that I was able to heal, you know, and able to be, and it starts with being grateful for yourself. That's Mm -hmm. a great way to start with the self-love. Everyone has beautiful qualities. Everyone yeah. has things to be grateful for in themselves. Yeah. You know, just the fact that you woke up the, this morning is something to be grateful for in yourself. Mm. You know, you got out of bed, you know, um, made yourself breakfast or you meditated, whatever you did. If we start switching that up and start knowing our self-worth, we start creating the life that we want. Mm. You know, my life looks very different than it did when I was sick. You know, I, yeah. I feel like I'm a... I am a better mom because I'm a better person for myself Mm -hmm. because I take care of myself. Uh, I am, you know, I love what I do. I'm passionate about my work. I love writing, you know, Mm -hmm. to incorporate the things that we love because those are the things that our soul is calling us to do. And we start living from that space. We know we, we deserve it. You know, we deserve to be living the life that we want to create but so many times we just have those messages life is hard life sucks then you die these horrible expressions they're so um, hard they're so toxic those expressions i mean come on <laughs> God. i know and we have those floating around in our self con- you know mm. our subconscious so we don't it's almost like we don't believe and so many people too even when start things start to go good that's when they self-sabotage yeah. or they feel like things can't possibly be mm. this when's when are things going to get bad again? You know, we're always kind of expecting that bad thing. But when we start living from this good space, the bad times become become further and fewer between. It's not like life doesn't happen and, you know, challenges, you can't control everything and everyone around you. Things are going to happen, but you have that self-worth and that strength within you to know that you're going to be okay. Yeah. That you're going to come through it wiser Mm -hmm. with more tools, you know, with more Mm -hmm. knowledge and, those episodes become further and fewer between and very short, you know, Mm. I mean, I used to lay in bed for weeks, you know, when something, I felt something bad happened. Now, you know, if, like I said, it's not like things don't happen to me and things don't affect me emotionally, but I never stay in that space for more than a day, a couple hours. And even when I'm in it, I'm asking myself, I'm not buried in it. I'm asking myself, why am I here? (laughs) What, Mm. what is it going on around me right now Mm. that brought me to this moment? What can I learn from it? What emotions am I feeling? And try to process those emotions Mm -hmm. instead of getting that energy stuck. I mean, because it's when we don't process the emotions that the energy does get stuck and we can create physical and mental dis, dis ease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's such a good point. Like, you know, I've been like a couple of other women that I've interviewed have kind of echoed what you've said about, um, self-care, you know, really, or self-love, you know, really looking after yourself, really finding the things that are nourishing for you because that's what your soul is calling for. Yeah. And to, to experience that and to do that into it, incorporate that into everyday life. And I had one woman say that it was selfish not to do self-care, not to look after yourself. <laughs> yeah. Because you burn yourself out and you're miserable and you're unhappy and you kind of spread that, you know, to everyone around <laughs> you. So yeah, it is. And that it's also a divine responsibility. I love that. Yeah, me I too. Love I love that too. And so and just, you know, it echoes what you say, like this is really important that women, you know, stop feeling guilty for looking after themselves or taking time for themselves or doing something that's nourishing for their soul because it's more, it's so important because if you're not doing it, you're not, you know, it's selfish, <laughs> you know. It's, it is selfish. You're not, you're not being the best person yeah. that you can be for yourself and that does – when I work with people, you know, they, they do begin to say, wow, my husband's being nicer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like things around them start shifting because their energy is shifted and they're yeah. feeling more joyful. So, of course, I mean, our energy bodies meet way before we meet in person. Mm-hmm. So if we're walking home or coming in the door miserable, you know, and resentful, what kind of energy are we giving out to our spouse? Yeah. You know, whereas if we're walking in the door because we just took a yoga class or took a walk with a girlfriend and had a great time... It's going to be a very different energy so different. that we come with. And you can feel that so intensely when someone walks in the door and they're feeling miserable and or whether it be angry or just, you know, unhappy, whatever it is, it just radiates. Like you can really feel that. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, and even if these people don't say anything, it's it's the nonverbal expression. It's so easy to pick up. So good stuff. All right, so if people want to find out more about your work, where can they go? 
They can go to JennyMannion.com, J-E-N-N-Y-M-A-N-N-I-O-N.com, and I do offer a free half-hour consultation Mm -hmm. uh, through this summit. I'm offering a free chakra ebook, which is also good to bring your chakras into balance and learn more about them. And yeah, I love speaking about this stuff, and I love talking with people, and sometimes it's just in that half an hour thing shift. I had a call today where the woman was like, wow, you said so many things that just made sense and made me shift Mm -hmm. the way I'm thinking about it. It doesn't have to be that complicated. That's what, you know, I am Mm -hmm. all about is just making it really easy. And the book is a short path to change because I do believe that it can be a short path to change and it doesn't have to be that complicated. And the book is available on my website or Amazon, bardsnoble.com or Llewellyn, my publisher's site, anywhere. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today and thank you for... Thank you for the energy exercise. I feel I still feel pretty good from that, and I feel relaxed. And it was a really good insight into learning about the chakras as well. It's definitely not something that I know a lot about. I mean, I you know I know the basics, but it was actually really nice to hear you kind of talk through them all. So thank you for everything. Oh, thank you! I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you.